This is John W. Whitehead, author of A Government of Wolves, the Emerging American Police State, bringing you a message about the state of our nation. You can largely determine where a person will fall in the debate over gun control and the Second Amendment based on their view of government and the role it should play in our lives. Those who want to see government as a benevolent parent looking out for our best interests tend to interpret the Second Amendment's militia reference as applying only to the military. To those who see the government as inherently corrupt, the Second Amendment is a means of ensuring that the populace will always have a way of defending themselves against threats to their freedoms. And then there are those who view the government as neither good nor evil, but merely a powerful entity that, as Thomas Jefferson recognized, must be bound down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution. To this group, the right to bear arms is no different from any other right enshrined in the Constitution, to be safeguarded, exercised prudently, and maintained. Yet when all is said and done, the debate over gun ownership in America is really a debate over who gets to call the shots and control the game. In other words, it's that same tug of war that keeps getting played out in every confrontation between the government and the citizenry over who gets to be master and who is relegated to the part of the servant. Ultimately, the Second Amendment's right to bear arms reflects not only a concern for one's personal defense, but serves as a check on the political power of the ruling authorities. It represents an implicit warning against governmental encroachments on one's freedoms, the warning shot over the bow to discourage any unlawful violations of our persons or property. As such, it reinforces that necessary balance in the citizen-state relationship. As George Orwell noted, That rifle hanging on the wall of the working class flat or laborer's cottage is the symbol of democracy. It is our job to see that it stays there. For more information on the Rutherford Institute, visit us at www.rutherford.org.